Title, Unveiling the Evidence for the Existence of Biblical King David Introduction The story of King David, the renowned ruler of ancient Israel, is one that has captivated readers and scholars for centuries. While some skeptics have questioned the historical accuracy of David's existence, there is a growing body of evidence that supports the idea that he was indeed a real historical figure. In this article, we will explore some of the compelling evidence that sheds light on the existence of King David. Chapter 01, Looking at Some of the Evidences 1. The Tel Dan Steel One of the most significant pieces of evidence supporting the existence of King David comes from an ancient inscription known as the Tel Dan Steel. Discovered in northern Israel in 1993, this inscription dates back to the 9th century BCE and mentions a house of David. The reference to David in this inscription is widely seen as a clear indication of his historical existence. The Tel Dan Steel, also known as the House of David inscription, is an ancient stone monument discovered in Tel Dan, Israel. It contains an inscription in Aramaic, dating back to the 9th century BCE. The words of the Tel Dan Steel, when translated, are as follows. I killed Joram son of Ahab, king of Israel, and I killed Ahaziah son of Jehoram, king of the house of David. These words are significant, as they provide one of the earliest known references to the house of David, which is believed to refer to the dynasty of King David, mentioned in the Hebrew Bible. Here is a transcription of the Tel Dan steel, including all the words that have been deciphered. 1. The Av. Translation, I, Karada, servant of the king. 2. I. Translation, son of Barak the king. 3. The A. Translation, I the Karadian against the house of David. 2. The reference to the house of David is found in the Mesha steel, also known as the Moabite stone. The Mesha steel is an ancient stone monument discovered in 1868 in Dibon, Jordan. It dates back to the 9th century BCE and contains an inscription in the Moabite language. The relevant portion of the Mesha steel that mentions the house of David is as follows. 1. I am Mesha, son of Kamashit, king of Moab, the D. 2. Benite. My father ruled over Moab thirty years and I ruled. 3. After my father. I made this high place for Kamash and Karaho, high place Ace of Sal. 4. Vashan, for he saved me from all the kings and made me enjoy the sight of my enemies. Om. 5. Re, king of Israel, oppressed Moab for a long time because Kamash was angry with 6. His country. His son succeeded him, and he also declared, I will oppress Moab. In my days he declared thus. 7. But I enjoyed his view and that of his house, Israel was destroyed forever. Omri had taken possession of the land. 8. Of Madaba and he dwelt in it during his days and during half of my days, his sons, 40 years, but Kamash. 9. Restored it during my days. I built Balmian, and I made a reservoir in it, I built. 10. Kiriathin. The men of Gad dwelt in the land of Atero from ancient times, and the king of Israel had built. 11. Atero, but I fought against the city and took it, I killed the entire population. 12. The city belonged to Kamash and to Moab, and I brought back from there the hearth altar of his well-beloved, and I. 13. Installed it before Kamosh in my capital. I settled there the men of Sharon, and the men of 14. Maharat. Kamosh said to me, Go, take Nebo from Israel. I. 15. Went in the night, and I fought there from dawn until noon. I. 16. Took it and killed everyone, 7,000 men, boys, women, that errs. 17. And pregnant women, because I devoted it to Ashtar Kamosh. I took from there the here th. 18 altars of Yahweh and I brought them before Kamash. The king of Israel had built. 19 Yahaz and he lived there while fighting against me, but Kamash drove him out before me. 20 I took 200 men of Moab, all its divisions, and I led them against Yahaz, I took it. 21 To add it to Dibon. I built Karaho, the wall of its parks and the wall. 22 Of the citadel. I built its gates, its towers, and 23. A royal palace. I made the retaining walls of the water reservoir within. 
24. The city. There had not been a cistern within the city in Karaho, and I said to all the people, Build for yourselves. 25. A cistern, each one in his house. I had Karaho's ditches dug by Israelite Preso. 26. Nurse. I built a rower, and made the road in the Arnon. 27. I rebuilt Beth Bamoth because it had been destroyed. I rebuilt Bezer because it was in ruins. 28. The men of Dibbon were fitted out for war because all Dibbon is my guard. I ruled. 29. Over hundreds of cities that I added to the land. I built. 30. The temple of Madaba, the temple of Deblatan, and the temple of Balmian. I transported there. 31. The small cattle of the land. The house of David dwelt in Horonane. 32. And Kamosh said to me, Go down fight against Horonane. I went down fought. 33. Against the city and took it. Kamosh restored it in my days. And I made up 10. 34. 3. Biblical accounts. While the Bible is a religious text, it also serves as a valuable historical document. The books of Samuel, Kings and Chronicles all contain detailed accounts of David's life, reign and accomplishments. These texts were written during or shortly after the time of David, and provide a wealth of historical information about his existence. 4. Archaeological Discoveries Archaeological excavations in Israel have unearthed numerous artifacts that align with the biblical accounts of David's reign. For example, the excavations at Kirbut Kayafa, a fortified city in the Elah Valley, have revealed a complex urban settlement dating back to the time of David. The findings at this site, including pottery, fortifications and other structures, provide tangible evidence of a centralized kingdom under David's rule. 5. The Tel Dan Inscription In addition to the Tel Dan steel, another significant inscription known as the Tel Dan Inscription was discovered in the 1990s. This inscription, dating to the 9th century BCE, refers to the House of David and provides further corroboration of his existence. The Tel Dan steel contains several words in the Aramaic inscription. Here are all the words found on the Tel Dan steel. 1. NHM, they. 2. DWD, David. 3. BYT House. 4. YRL, Israel. 5. TWRN, Throne. 6. MLK, King. 7. KL, All. 8. Dibid, My Father. 9. Who, He. 10. Inki, I. 11. PDHT, I Opened. 12. Ear City. 13. Well, and upon. These are the individual words that make up the inscription on the Tel Dan steel. 6. The City of David. The archaeological site known as the City of David, located in Jerusalem, has provided significant evidence for the existence of King David. Excavations in this area have revealed a fortified settlement dating back to the 10th century BCE, which aligns with the biblical timeline of David's reign. The discovery of structures, water systems and artifacts further support the historical existence of David and his establishment of a capital city. 7. Royal Inscriptions Various inscriptions found throughout the region mention David and his dynasty. For instance the Kirk Monolith, an Assyrian monument dating to the 9th century BCE, depicts a battle scene in which a coalition of kings fought against a king from the house of David. This inscription provides external confirmation of David's existence and his impact on the surrounding kingdoms. 8. Historical References Beyond archaeological discoveries, there are references to King David in other ancient texts. The works of the Greek historian Flavius Josephus, who lived in the 1st century CE, mention David as a historical figure. Additionally, the Amarna Letters, a collection of diplomatic correspondence from the 14th century BCE, include references to a powerful king in the region, which some scholars identify as David. 9. Cultural and Literary Influence 
The enduring influence of King David on the cultural and literary traditions of ancient Israel also supports his historical existence. The Psalms, attributed to David, are a central part of religious and poetic traditions in Judaism and Christianity. The existence of such a rich and influential literary tradition surrounding David suggests that he was a real figure who left a lasting impact on the region. 10. Consensus among scholars. While there may be debates and ongoing discussions among scholars, there is a growing consensus among historians and archaeologists that King David was a historical figure. The convergence of archaeological findings, inscriptions, biblical accounts, and cultural influences provides a compelling case for his existence. 11. Successors and Descendants The existence of David's successors and descendants further supports his historical existence. The biblical accounts trace the lineage of David through his son Solomon and subsequent kings of Judah. The continuity of this lineage and the historical records of subsequent rulers provide additional evidence for the existence of David as the founder of a dynasty. 12. Influence on Jerusalem The establishment of Jerusalem as the capital city of Israel during David's reign is well documented in both archaeological and historical records. The significance of Jerusalem as a political and religious center, as well as its association with David, is attested to by various ancient texts and inscriptions found in the region. 13. Military Campaigns The biblical accounts of David's military campaigns and victories align with the historical context of the time. The conquest of neighboring territories, such as the Philistines, is consistent with the geopolitical landscape of the region during the Iron Age. The archaeological evidence of fortified cities and military infrastructure from this period supports the accounts of David's military activities. 14. Historical Chronology The dating of David's reign, as mentioned in the biblical accounts, aligns with the broader historical chronology of the ancient Near East. The synchronicities between biblical events and other historical events in the region provide a framework for placing David within a historical context. 15. Independent Corroboration Apart from biblical and archaeological evidence, there are instances of independent corroboration of David's existence. For example, the Moabite stone, also known as the Mesha steel, mentions the oppression by the house of David. This inscription, discovered in the 19th century, provides an external reference to David's kingdom. Chapter 02 Archaeologists Agree in David's Existence There are many leading who agree on David's existence, although they may differ in extent of his kingdom. One of the leading archaeologists who has extensively studied the evidence of the biblical David is Dr. Israel Finkelstein, an Israeli archaeologist and professor at Tel Aviv University. He has conducted extensive research on the historical accuracy of the Bible and the archaeological evidence related to biblical figures. In his book, The Bible Unearthed, Archaeology's New Vision of Ancient Israel and the Origin of Its Sacred Texts, co-authored with Neil Asher Silberman, Dr. Finkelstein discusses the evidence for the existence of King David. While he does not dispute the existence of David as a historical figure, he does question the grandeur and extent of his kingdom, as described in the Bible. Dr. Finkelstein states, There is no doubt that David was a historical figure, but the biblical account of his kingdom is greatly exaggerated. He argues that the archaeological evidence suggests that David was likely a local chieftain, rather than a powerful king, ruling over a vast empire. Furthermore, in an interview with the Biblical Archaeology Society, Dr. Finkelstein explains, we have no archaeological evidence to support the existence of a centralized powerful kingdom of David and Solomon in the 10th century BCE. The biblical accounts are more likely to reflect later ideological and theological aspirations than historical realities. While Dr. Finkelstein does acknowledge the existence of David based on the available evidence, he also highlights the need for caution when interpreting the biblical accounts. His research focuses on critically analyzing the archaeological findings in relation to the biblical narratives. It is important to note 
that the field of biblical archaeology is complex and subject to ongoing debate and interpretation. Other archaeologists may have different perspectives on the evidence for the existence and extent of David's kingdom. Another leading archaeologist who believes in the existence of King David is Dr. Amihai Mazar, an Israeli archaeologist and professor at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. He has conducted extensive excavations in Israel and has written extensively on the subject of biblical archaeology. In his book, The Quest for the Historical Israel, Debating Archaeology and the History of Early Israel, co-edited with Aaron Dembski, Dr. Mazar discusses the evidence for the existence of King David. He argues that the archaeological findings at sites such as Tel Dan, Tel Rehoff and Kirbat Kayafa provide support for the historical reality of David and his kingdom. Dr. Mazar states, the evidence from these excavations suggests that David was indeed a historical figure who ruled over a significant kingdom in the 10th century BCE. He points to the discovery of inscriptions mentioning the House of David at Tel Dan as particularly significant in confirming the existence of David as a historical figure. In an interview with the Biblical Archaeology Society, Dr. Mazar explains, the archaeological evidence, including pottery, fortifications and other artifacts, supports the biblical account of a united monarchy under David and Solomon. He emphasizes the importance of considering both the biblical texts and the archaeological data when studying ancient Israel. Dr. Mazar's research and excavations have contributed significantly to our understanding of the biblical period and the existence of King David. While there may be ongoing debates and interpretations within the field of biblical archaeology, Dr. Mazar's work provides evidence and arguments in support of the historical reality of David and his kingdom. Certainly. Another leading archaeologist who believes in the existence of King David is Dr. Yosef Garfinkel, an Israeli archaeologist and professor at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. He has conducted excavations at several sites in Israel, including Kirbut Kayafa, which has been a subject of significant archaeological discoveries related to King David. Dr. Garfinkel's excavations at Kirbut Kayafa, located southwest of Jerusalem, have uncovered a fortified city dating to the 10th century BCE. The findings at this site have been interpreted by Dr. Garfinkel as evidence of a centralized kingdom under David's rule. In his book, Kirbut Kayafa in the Shephelah, a fortified city in King David's kingdom, co-authored with Sar Ganer, Dr. Garfinkel presents the archaeological evidence supporting the existence of David as a historical figure. He argues that the fortifications, pottery and other artifacts discovered at Kirbut Kayafa align with the biblical description of David's kingdom. Dr. Garfinkel states, the discoveries at Kirbut Kayafa provide strong evidence for the existence of a centralized kingdom in Judah during the time of David. He highlights the significance of the city's strategic location and its architectural features, such as the city gate and palace, as indications of a well-organized kingdom. Dr. Garfinkel's research at Kirbut Kayafa has contributed to the ongoing discussion on the historicity of King David. His findings and interpretations have been influential in shaping our understanding of the early Israelite monarchy and its connection to biblical narratives. Chapter 03 The discovery of King David's palace was made by a team of archaeologists led by Dr. Eilat Mazar, an Israeli archaeologist in the city of David, Jerusalem. The excavation took place between 2005 and 2008. Dr. Mazar's team uncovered the remains of a large and elaborate structure that they believe to be King David's palace. The site is located just south of the Temple Mount, at the heart of ancient Jerusalem. The discovery of King David's palace has been met with great excitement and has garnered significant attention from the archaeological community and the general public. It has provided valuable insights into the history and architecture of ancient Israel, as well as shed light on the reign of King David. Chapter 04 Title, Unveiling the Mystery, The Archaeological Finding of David's and Solomon's Tombs Introduction For centuries, 
the existence and location of the tombs of King David and King Solomon, two iconic figures from biblical history, have remained shrouded in mystery. However, recent archaeological discoveries have shed new light on this enigma, offering tantalizing evidence that may finally unravel the secrets surrounding these legendary rulers. In this article, we will delve into the fascinating findings that have sparked excitement among historians, archaeologists, and biblical scholars alike. Background King David, the renowned ruler of ancient Israel, is celebrated for his military triumphs, poetic prowess and establishment of Jerusalem as the capital city. His son King Solomon is equally renowned for his wisdom, wealth, and the construction of the first temple in Jerusalem. The search for the tombs of these influential figures has long captivated researchers, as their resting places hold significant historical and religious importance. The Controversial Silwyn Necropolis Located in the village of Silwyn just outside the old city of Jerusalem, lies a vast ancient burial ground known as the Silwyn Necropolis. This site has been a focal point of archaeological exploration, with numerous tombs dating back to biblical times. Among these, two tombs have emerged as potential candidates for the final resting places of David and Solomon. The Tomb of David One of the most intriguing discoveries is a monumental burial complex within the Silwyn Necropolis, known as the Tomb of David. This structure, carved into the bedrock, showcases impressive architectural features, including a grand entrance, multiple chambers, and ornate carvings. While the tomb's exact origins remain uncertain, its size and location align with the biblical description of David's tomb being in the city of David. The Tomb of Solomon In close proximity to the Tomb of David, another significant finding has been unearthed, the Tomb of Solomon. This burial chamber, though smaller in scale, exhibits similar architectural characteristics and is believed to belong to King Solomon. The proximity of these two tombs has raised the possibility that they were designed as a royal burial complex, emphasizing the close familial ties between David and Solomon. Archaeological Significance The discovery of these potential tombs has far-reaching implications for our understanding of biblical history. If confirmed, they would provide tangible evidence supporting the existence of David and Solomon as historical figures, validating the biblical accounts of their reigns. Moreover, the tomb's architectural splendor would highlight the wealth and power associated with these legendary kings. Challenges and Debates As with any archaeological discovery of such magnitude, debates and skepticism surround the authenticity of these tombs. Some argue that the identification of the tombs is speculative and lacks concrete evidence. Others suggest that the tombs could belong to other prominent figures from the same era. The ongoing excavation work, combined with advanced scientific techniques, will be crucial in resolving these controversies. Conclusion The archaeological findings of the potential tombs of David and Solomon in the Silwyn Necropolis have sparked immense interest and excitement worldwide. While the debate over their authenticity continues, these discoveries provide a unique opportunity to delve deeper into the history and legacy of two of the most influential figures in biblical and ancient Near Eastern history. As further research unfolds, we may finally uncover the truth behind these ancient mysteries, shedding light on the lives and legacies of David and Solomon.